birthday nowadays? Practice. <laughs> it's always game day. Yeah, my birthday is always uh, playing a game or practicing, so being around some of my favorite people. Now hopefully the, the team will take care of you on your road trip then, right? As long as they play hard, keep getting better. That's the most important. Um, but they're a good group, of, good group of young ladies. How do you feel about your club coming out of the two games in Mexico and then the, obviously the week together? Yeah. Uh, great. You know, I think um, – we played Stanford exceptionally well. If you were there um, or even watched the video, you wouldn't even think we lost by 17 points. It was a, a great game all the way up to probably about the six-minute six mark, and we played all guards. So if our post players stay out of trouble, they play an extra 10 minutes, we're in good shape. So, um, you know, I thought we did some really good things. Um, we had a great game plan. Um, you know, so that was obviously a, a huge test for us, and we were very disappointed because we were that close of – continue to perform well. Um, the TCU, um, they hadn't shot the ball well, and of course against us they shot the ball exceptionally well. And um, they had 6'6 six, six and 6'4, six, and I thought we did some good jobs, got them in foul trouble, even when they played the zone the entire time. And, um, you know, game situation, April Wilson really guided us very well uh, with, you know, breaking down the zone, doing pull-up jump shots, which that's what we need, not just shooting threes. Ashley Morsetti was great, really steadied us. Um, Lisa Clemens got her numbers up. Um, the rebounding was huge. Uh, you know, so I thought, you know, playing a Big 12 team, they're, they're very good. Um, and all the wins that we've had so far, at the end of the year, they, they'll really make up for it. But I, I thought just the overall um, being away for a week, being with different uh, teammates, uh, doing different things, I mean, that's where you, you really continue to bond. And, um, you know, it was a really good trip that way. So how do you keep, you know, your front court from getting in foul trouble? It's happened all over the country. So, yeah. you know, if we're not a top five team, they're going to be in foul trouble. They call it differently for the top five teams. Um, I watch that on video all the time. You know, um, I think the men ran into that as well. Uh, but, you know, we're just still trying to adjust, you know, and it's and it's you have to adjust each half. You yeah. know, it's not like you have to adjust in a – one game, you got to adjust half to half, depending on how it's going to be called. And you know, we're trying to clean up, not not fouling on a shot. So I'm not letting them block any shots the entire first half. And Camille can a little bit in the second half. But if you only have zero fouls or one foul, um, so we're cleaning it up that way. Um, but then some of the other fouls are just standing there setting a screen, you know, yeah. just bumping somebody. Um, where I'm watching other games and they can play and they're not getting fouls. So you know, we, we're just it's still a learning curve. Um, and it will be all year. Lisa said she's just as concerned, if not more concerned, about offensive fouls. That it seems like they've been up, you know, on moving screens or, mm -hmm. or trying to dig somebody out of the post or something. Is that? Yeah, I mean, uh, you, trying to post up, make yeah. physical contact. As long as you don't don't displace, that should be okay. Um, as long as you're not pushing with two hands, you should be able to play defense. And, and she's been able, she's been getting calls on that, which uh, again, it's you just have to continue to see how each official is going to call it and adjust to that. And, and we try to set, you know, just screens, just standing, um, you know. And so offensively, you just teach that when someone's screening, you just go off their hip and they'll call foul. So I mean, it's um, you know they're they're totally making an advantage for the offense, um, you know. But uh, we'll see what happens. How would you? Uh characterize Morissetti's basketball mentality? Um, smooth, tough, consistent, steady. Um, she has a huge basketball IQ. Uh, she doesn't get rattled. Courtney Moses um, just said she reminds her of Reggie Miller. Um, just very just the same. Doesn't change. She can pull up on a dime. She can shoot the three. She's just long and lanky. She goes at her own speed. Very hard to guard her. Uh, but, you know, she she's... And when you look at her production with her minutes, I mean, she's off the chart, you know, and um, obviously that's why we played her a lot more in TCU game. Um, she'll be playing a lot against Duke. I mean, she'll, when you have those type of numbers, you're going to play. Just with Duke, uh, you know, kind of good all over the place. Oh, yeah. You know, get, get another front line test, too. And, mm -hmm. You know, just keeping, keeping your bigs on the floor. I mean, I mean, how do, you, how do you keep them on the floor in this situation? Well, the biggest thing is you got to box out and you're not going to block shots and you stay between them and the basket. And, you know, um, those are the biggest things. They play majority zone. Um, so you shouldn't have to totally get in that much trouble. You know, we'll play man and zone. We'll do a combination as well. Um, you know, but they have to. 
they have to be productive. And if we got to have Camille and Whitney at the five, I mean, you have to rotate them. And if they both have three fouls, it's it's that's when it that's when we struggle. We can't have Lisa at the five and Tori at the five. We're just undersized when we play against big teams like that. You've had two games now. Cordy didn't score one game. And yeah. KK didn't score, but. You've reached into the bench. You've had other people step up. Mm -hmm. Just how you feel about down the line yeah. players you have to to come in and, and, and boost the production. And we're playing 10 to 11 players. You have to have a bench. I mean, you have to with foul trouble. And, you know, somebody said something about, oh, when you're playing a tough game, you need to shorten your bench. Well, it's hard to shorten your bench when you have three or four, four fouls. <laughs> um, you know, so I think that's big. But, you know, our bench production is like thir about 32 points a game. Um, Courtney and KK can't have scoreless games when we go into the Big Ten. They can't. If they have eight, they have ten, but they can't have zero points. So, uh, But it does show that, again, we have other – you can't just shut down two kids. Even when Belmont played triangle and two, we still were fine. You know, So I think that's good, but those two have to score for us. KK, you taking good shots, just missing them? Or? The last two games she played more point. The other game she was yeah. more on the wing. Um, and we got to get April back there playing 60% when she's on the floor and KK 40%. We, we got to balance that out. So we need to do that. But Stanford couldn't guard KK. Yeah. I mean, they did nothing but compliment. They could not guard KK the entire first half. They changed some things in the second half. But, I mean, she got everybody in foul trouble because of her speed. So we wanted her at the point because that's where we needed her mm -hmm. at the time. But we need to get her on the wing to have more balanced shots. You know, rather her always having to go as fast as she can right. and pull up on a dime. Do you take anything out of the Stanford game for this upcoming game against Duke? Like, oh, every game we, we, we've got to learn and get better. I mean, TCU was a great game. Stanford was a great game. You know, we're talking about the size. Uh, Stanford is very um, methodical. They don't get rattled. They're just really steady where Duke is steady, and then they can put the heat up. They can press. So we've got to be able to not allow them to make a lot of runs. Stanford, they didn't make a lot of runs. When they did, they got to 12. We cut it to 8. Uh, but we can't do that. Um, but Duke is, they're definitely number two in the country. They're beating everybody by 30 or 40. That's usually what UConn has done in the past. UConn's only beat teams by 20 because they have two of their best players out. So um, Duke's the real deal. They have five seniors. They should have went to the Final Four last year, but their point guard, Chelsea Gray, uh, tore ACL in February. And that's the only reason they weren't in the Final Four last year. But they're, they're the real deal. Thanks, Coach.